Hey, what's going on everybody? So for today's video on tying Puget Sound Sea Run Cutthroat Flies, I'm doing something of a request. I had uh, tied up this fly here recently and posted a picture of it on my Instagram and uh, at Quick Quinn on Instagram requested this video. So uh, this one's for you, buddy. This is a ghost shrimp pattern. Um, here the last couple, two, three weeks, I've filleted some resident coho that had were just absolutely stuffed with pretty large ghost shrimp. And these are pretty big part of these fish's diet down in the South Sound in particular. And uh, I had been uh, text messaging with uh, my buddy Josh, uh, at Fish and Josh over on Instagram, um, owner of Spawn Fly Fish. Great, great company. Highly recommend you guys check them out. Local company uh, based out of Olympia, I believe. They make some really cool heads and have a great online fly shop, great customer service. So uh, give them a look if you haven't checked them out already. But uh, I got inspiration from this fly from Josh. He had uh, was texting me a couple patterns that he'd been working on and really dug this one. Um, I, I didn't have the exact same materials that he had, so I kind of had to improvise. And this is sort of what I came up with. But uh, the couple times that I've fished it thus far, it's it's produced pretty well. Um, both coho and and sea run cutthroat have been uh, have been all about this one. Uh, it's a fairly large pattern. Uh, I know a lot of people get kind of weirded out fishing larger patterns for sea run cutthroat and resident coho. I am not one of them. I fish a lot of big patterns. Um, if you ever see one of these fish puke out a six inch sand lance or a great big herring or a long polychaete worm or something. Uh, these fish are not afraid to eat a big meal. In fact, I often find that a big meal is is really going to get their attention versus smaller stuff. Uh, I will often fish great big flies right through, you know, chum fry schools and things. And sometimes you fish a really tiny little chum fry imitation. It's just going to get kind of lost in the masses. But uh, you show them something big, juicy, meaty, and uh, they generally can't resist a big portion of the time. So... Uh, just going to jump right into this here. Uh, it's a fairly simple pattern. Um, it's just tied on a with a stinger hook. Um, so I'm tying this. This is a size 4 Mustad 34007DT hook, I believe. Um, you can use any old hook that you're going to use because I'm going to actually clip this hook when I'm done. Um, so I wouldn't recommend a super expensive hook. You could certainly do this with a shank. Um, I don't, I have shanks. I, I don't tie on them all that much. I've always tied my stinger hooks on a hook and then clipped the hook. Um, I'm trying to get better and, and use shanks more and more, but uh, this is just what I'm comfortable with. So uh, again, you know, any hook could work, would, would, would do just fine here. Um, I've got some Vivas uh, pink 10 aught thread and I'm just going to start by laying down a little thread base here just as usual. And the first step is going to be to attach the, the stinger loop. And for that, I'm using uh, this is 20 pound Fireline. Um, I use Fireline on pretty much all of my stinger flies. Uh, I just find that it's, it's the right amount of stiffness and limpness, and it's extremely durable, uh, holds up well. Uh, I tie all my, my larger coho patterns, stinger clousers, and things with 30 pound Fireline. Um, you could certainly use that, but given that I'm targeting smaller fish with this, the 20 pound is just fine. So I'm just gonna, gonna loop this over and uh, tie it in. I'm gonna make a few wraps right on top of the hook shank and then I'm gonna adjust the length. Um, I want the stinger hook to be hanging kind of right off the back uh, of the material. I don't want it, I don't want it buried in there, especially since I'm using this to mostly target these coho that are, Really, really love these ghost shrimp. Uh, coho are notorious for taking a fly from behind. And I want them to to get that hook in their mouth if they come up and try to eat this fly directly from behind. So I'm going to wind this all the way up to the eye. And then I'm going to take the two ends and I'm going to run it back into the eye and underneath the hook shank. This is just for a little added protection. You don't have to do it this way. Um, just to ensure that it's absolutely not going to pull out under any circumstances. I've uh, done it this way for a long, long time and I've never had one of these things pull out. So now I'm actually going to whip finish this because I'm going to tie this this fly with a bead head. And uh, this is the only way I've, or excuse me, a cone head. This is the only way I've ever discovered to uh, be able to double the 
the fire line through and still use a cone head. So I'm going to take it out of the vise and I've got a five millimeter brass cone here. I like a fairly large cone on this uh, to help it get down and help it give it a little bit of little bit of front heavy action. So I don't know how you'll be able to see this, but I'm going to take it and, and just man, I got to pinch this loop tight so I can fit it, fit it through the the cone. But I'm just going to kind of bend the the stinger loop around, kind of in the shape of the hook, and uh, put the stinger loop through first. And then I'm going to come in and then run the cone up as usual. And it's a little bit of a tight fit, but it'll go. There we go. So then I'll just put the hook back in the vise. And reattach my thread. Like I said, I'm sure there's probably a, a better way of doing this as far as the and I've done it where I don't actually, I just basically secure the, the stinger loop to the top of the hook. I don't run it back through the, the eyes like that, but I like to do it that way. It just gives me a little bit more peace of mind. I'm going to take and add a little bit of glue on top of this just for a little added durability and make sure that this thing is not going to pull out. Um, again, I'm, I'm targeting fairly, you know, a lot smaller fish with this fly, but you never know what you're going to encounter. Eight pound black mouth could grab this. You never know. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put my, my stinger hook on just because it can be a little bit of a hassle when you actually uh, have the fly tied. And uh, for this hook, I'm using an owner cutting point, uh, basically an octopus style hook. And this is a size four. These are uh, super sharp, super sharp hooks. I'm just going to put that in and then run it up through the loop so it's looped on there. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do material wise is I need to put, I have some shrimp eyes. And there's a lot of cool uh, shrimp eyes out there. However, I am cheap, so I'm going to make my own. I'm going to take some, uh, this is just 50 pound Berkeley Big Game Mono, and I'm just going to singe the eyes a little bit until they make a nice little, nice little ball. Just like that. Well, you can see it. You can just take that lighter and get the flame nearby, and you'll be good to go. So now that I have my my eyeball at the end of my mono, I'm going to take a black Copic sketch marker, and I'm just going to uh, just kind of cover this and make it black so it stands out a little bit more. Looks more like a shrimp eye. I don't know how truly important it is to, to put these eyeballs on here, but I like to do it. It looks cool, changes things up. and You can definitely color those however you want, or there's all kinds of pre-made eyes out there that you could, you could use. So now I have my, my two pieces, and since, since the mono was kind of, it kind of comes on, it comes on this tight spool, you can see how it's kind of curled, you know, coiled out. I'm just going to kind of match these up, coiling and curled out in the opposite direction. And I'm going to just tie these in right on top of the hook shank. It can be a little bit of a nuisance to get these with this. You could probably do this with a little lighter mono and it would be easier. Um, I just happen to have 50 pound lying around near my desk, so that's what I'm using. I want these to stick, you know, fairly far back on the fly. I don't want them to be lost kind of in the in all the material. I'm just going to kind of spread them out a little bit and fold them up. Uh, you know, I kind of want them a little bit curving up and outward. 
Um, but again, this is possibly an unnecessary step with this fly. So do it however you like, as with everything. Okay, now we got our eyeballs. I'm going to put a little bit more glue on there. I'm kind of a glue fanatic. Next up, I'm going to take some black crystal flash, about oh, four strands, and I want to kind of uneven the tips just a little bit. I don't want it to be totally even. These are going to kind of be the, the antenna. So I'm going to have these come back a little ways past the, the eyes and even back possibly past the, the hook just a touch. And I'll tie that in right on top as well. This is another step that who knows how, how important it is, but I think it looks cool when they're on there. Kind of spread these out just a little bit if I can. Don't necessarily want them all in one clump. Get that hook kind of out of my way. Okay, now the only other material that I'm using here is some rabbit strip. This is a, a two tone peachy pink. Um, I also you do this in a peachy orange. Um, you know, you could do whatever, whatever colors you like, and I'm going to kind of just measure out the tail so it's fairly close so the, the stinger hook is, is not buried in it at all. It's, it's, uh, it's right near the end, so if a fish comes up and eats this pattern from behind, they are going to taste steel. And I'm going to kind of clear off a little tie-in point here. get that tail. I always start with a couple of semi-loose wraps just to get get going and then I'll kind of cinch them down as I go. Okay, I'll put a couple in front and then I'm just going to run my thread all the way up to the to the cone and I'm basically going to start wrapping this the rest of this piece of bunny uh, got to kind of tweak it a little bit when you first start so that this, the hide lays flat and then after that you just kind of palmer that up the hook shank careful not to not to wrap too much over the, the previous wrap until you get up to the to the cone. And then I like to I like to make one extra wrap right at the cone if I can, um, just to kind of fill it in and make sure that cone isn't sliding all over the place or anything crazy like that. And then I'll I'll break my break my thread. That's awesome. Welcome to real world fly tying where these things happen. It's okay, we can salvage this. I don't break this Vivas thread all that often, but and of course my bobbin threader is over at my tying desk. I've really jacked this up. There we go. So I'm going to back that bunny off and just 
reattach my thread. Then I will rewrap. Sorry for that little delay, but these things happen. I'm sure they have happened to you guys. I don't care how long you've been time flies, you're going to break a thread once in a while. I think I actually caught the thread on the sharp edge of this cone head. Okay, so I'm just going to tie my rabbit in there. Get that good and secured. Trim off that excess and then I'll kind of make sure it's nice and secured down here. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of glue and onto my thread and then whip finish. Sure that that bunny is not trapped down or and that's pretty much it the last step will be to uh, clip off the hook shank right at the band um, I'll do that a little bit later I usually tie up a bunch of these and then get out my side cutters and crimp them out um, you can tie this pattern without the, the cone head um, I like the cone head for just getting it down a little bit um, especially if you're going to be fishing it with like an intermediate line, um, these, these rabbit, it tends to, so it wants to sit on the surface until it really soaks up water and gets down, so the, the cone head helps with that. Uh, fishing out of the boat, I will generally fish this with like a type 3 or a type 5 line, um, in which case I don't need the cone, but I do like it. It gives it just a little bit of a, of a jigging action. Um, I've been fishing it, you know, I've only been tying and fishing this pattern for this last handful of days, but uh, it's been very productive. Um, been fishing it fast, been fishing it slow, hasn't seemed to matter. Uh, I've put this in front of any jumping coho that we find, they've been pretty aggressive on it. And I've caught a fair number of Z-Run Cutthroat on it, so it's in a, a very good, good producing pattern thus far. It's very easy to tie. and. Uh, I would uh, recommend giving this one a shot. You can mess with colors, you can do different things with this, but uh, this is the general the general concept of how I'm doing it. Again, got this the inspiration of this from uh, from Josh over at Spawn Flyfish. Go check him out. Uh, give this pattern a whirl, add a few to your box. If they work for you, love to hear about it. And as always, thanks for watching.